And joining us now from UCLA is head coach Corey Close and student athletes Japrice Dean and Michaela Onionware. And SID here off to the side is Seth Dolly. Coach, if you would start with the opening statement, please. Well, good afternoon. Is it good afternoon? Good morning? Something like that. But uh, just thank you all for being here. We are really excited about this incredible conference and the chance to tell the stories of the amazing young women in this conference. So thank you all for uh, your participation and enthusiasm in growing our game and in showcasing these amazing young women. Uh, we are very excited about the upcoming season. Uh, we really, I, I really love these uh, young ladies and, and their passion for the game. Our team is going to be versatile. We will continue to be up tempo. Um, I, I love the way we're shooting the basketball, waiting for them to guard somebody, but you know, work in progress. Um, but really like the pieces that we have in place um, with our basketball team and, and just really excited about the Pac-12 season ahead. Hi, good morning, Michelle Smith, Pac-12.com. Japrice, I remember the video from last year when you knew you were gonna get to come back. And so you're back for your fifth season. So I'm just curious, like, what's your anticipation level for this year? Um, well, on that topic, I just really want to thank everyone who was involved in helping me get that year back. Um, that was a great feeling, and I was super excited. Um, just for the anticipation of this season, um, I'm super excited, super excited about the freshmen and our returners. Um, and I'm excited about what we're going to do this year. I know we have high expectations. Um, I'm just super excited to play again. So excited will probably be my <laughs> my word. Excited. <laughs> Don't everybody go at once. <clears throat> Janie McCauley from AP. N nice to see you all. Um, we, we I just asked Larry just a little bit on on um, this fair. Um, fair pay to play, how much do you think that could affect the women's game? He, he expressed major concerns, and I know we're still a few years off from this, but it, it's sort of a big deal for California. You're a yeah. big California institution. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts on that, and, and does it blur the lines for, for pro sports? And <sighs> You know, I, I, my, I'm, a <coughs> I'm a huge advocate for student athletes and opportunity, and I'm a huge believer and what happens in the lives of young women as a result of being involved in college sports and amateur sports, quite frankly. So I think, to be honest with you, I have some more to learn. We actually had a good meeting this morning about it, and I'm learning and educating myself on our campus. It's, it's such a delicate line, right? You want um, players to have opportunities, and you never want to limit opportunities, but you also don't want unintended consequences to maybe trickle down to how it could affect women's opportunities and how it could play out in recruiting circles and, you know, is this good intention to try to reward image and likeness really going to play out to reward that or will there be some other things that are uh, taken away that are unintended? And I think that's, that's sort of my caution, but I don't think I'm educated enough yet to, um, to really play, to do a side, but I think it's a complicated issue that we need to think carefully about and we need to not get uh, sucked up into the momentum of public opinion, but at the same time listen well, consider well, research well, and, uh, and my job is always to look out for uh, women's and, and especially women's women's basketball, um, but women in sport in general. You okay? Right over here. I'll, I'll just go with it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Coach, a uh, quick question regarding uh, your incoming class. You've got some wonderful veterans mm -hmm. returning, and yet another great incoming class, whether it's the transfer in Natalie and, and some of your four or five-star kids. Help us understand how quickly mm. they can help. 
Well, I'm really um, thankful for the newcomers to our, our program. Um, you know, I think that we've really needed some size, and I think Bryn uh, Maskowitz has been a huge addition to us already. She's, um, you know, getting healthy a little bit right now, but she has uh, already made a huge impact on our program. And I think that was maybe the biggest surprise I didn't know. It was really fun to be over in Thailand coaching in USA Basketball because I got to watch her in competitive environments and be around her. Um, to see how she would uh, transfer over. Um, but I will tell you, she has done better than I would even hoped, and I was pretty excited going in. Our um, guard play uh, from you know Cameron Brown to uh, Jaden uh, Owens, as well as Charisma Osborne, um, they have really been – their passion for the game and their confidence. You know, you never know with freshmen – how that confidence is really going to go. And I would say they have been surprisingly uh, confident, and especially Jaden Owens really using her voice and leadership um, has been already an impact in our program. So I always say that freshmen will hit the wall. It doesn't matter. Um, they, they, it'll be a matter of who can get around the wall, over the wall, through the wall, because it is a hard transition. Uh, but I think this group has a chance to really be strong contributors. Uh, and then Natalie Cho, um, you know, it doesn't feel like she's a new player, obviously, um, from a public standpoint she is, but she's been practicing hard, and her love of the game, I mean, pretty much every day you're going to get her to get 500 shots in before she goes to class, and she's always she's a come early, stay late player uh, that wants to do whatever it takes. Uh, my biggest thing for her is she has loves it so much, she puts so much pressure on herself, and I want her to bring the joy. Uh, she has so much creativity in her game, and I think is the more joy she brings to what she's doing, um, um, I think the better she's going to play, and, and she's going to be a tremendous uh, asset for our program. Michaela, last year, early in the season, you guys hit a stretch. You were you were in transition after um, Jordan and Monique, and you guys just you kind of hit a little bit of a wall, and you had to put it back together. Are you confident that the early part of this season, you guys aren't going to be in that same position? I think that last year that was kind of the story for our team, which is finding our new identity after Mo and Jordan left. And so I think that last year we did find our identity. I think that, that yes, we had a great season last year, and we're going we're gonna to look at that as a great season. But I think now coming into the season that we know our identity and we're going to find that we're going to find our new roles for t or new teammates, our new freshmen, and we're going to be really, really good this year. I think last year, like I said, that, that identity was – finding our identity and now that I think that we've we've kind of implemented it I think that um, this year it's we're great rebounders great shooters uh, we work well together um, great teammates and so I think that last year kind of helped us find that new identity uh, Corey I was wondering about uh, what you remember about the uh, triple overtime game with Arizona last year and if you thought they'd be capable of going on to the winning the NIT and looks like now they're being predicted to be kind of in the middle of the, for the race. Well, I, I just give Adia so much credit. Um, not only did she um, get her team playing their best basketball in March, um, but she rallied an entire community to get behind that team in a really special way. And, and we all need to celebrate that because that's growing our game and growing enthusiasm for the journey of women's basketball. I think that that triple overtime game, that weekend was our turning point in the season. So going to Arizona uh, State and being able to come with a win, a great shot, and clutch moment by Japrice Dean in that game, and then to respond a couple days later with a triple overtime win against a very, very good Arizona team. Uh, I, I think it was for our you know, building process. It was really important for our mentality. Um, but I'll tell you, they earned our respect um, by the way that Arizona played, by the way they competed. Uh, neither team could stop each other in crucial moments. Uh, we were thankful to come out on top, um, but uh, definitely earned our respect. And we're excited for where that program is going. And as you know, I think that's really the key to our conference. There's a lot of attention given to the top of the conference. Um, but the way that our entire depth of our conference has been risen and up, and Arizona's a big part of that. I think that's a major storyline and why our conference is the best in the country. Uh, Kevin Dan of Stanford Women's Basketball Radio. Coach, kind of following along those lines, you're one of four teams that project to be potentially preseason top 10 this year. Just how, how do you see the depth in this conference as uh, compared to 
previous years. Well, I think that, like I said, is the storyline. And I think, you know, obviously Stanford has been the torchbearer for a long time in terms of consistent level of excellence. And obviously uh, Oregon and, and Oregon State are, are, have earned a lot of attention and are phenomenal basketball teams. But I think we've had really good teams in the past at the top. And I think what differentiates our conference this year is the depth of excellence. And I think we're going to have, you know, eight teams vying to be in the NCAA tournament and maybe more than that. Um, but I think that truly the depth of the conference, if you go along any other conference and you look at what are the differentiators, the top, you know, there's a lot of really good teams in the top of the other Power Five conferences, um, but I don't think anybody has the depth from top to bottom all the way through that we do. Corey, you, you guys, and, and you can all weigh in if you'd like, you, you mentioned that pivotal weekend uh, against Arizona. But but going into Eugene and, and handing them their only home loss of the season, what did you draw from that? And and I, I you know I understand Ruthie was hurt and blah blah blah. You still had to win there with a hostile environment, et cetera, et cetera. If you guys could help us understand, maybe there was a moment where you looked at each other and said, you know, we can hang with anybody in this country, and it played out as you made the great run in the tur in, in the NCAA tournament. If you could talk about that win. I think playing in Matthew Knight Arena, like it's a crazy, crazy atmosphere. And I think that night it was just a testament to how hard we worked as a team. And we were down 22 at one point. And I don't think that there was ever one point where we ever gave up. I think that speaks a lot to our character as a team and just how the coaching staff has instilled in us what our values are. And I think that um, just kind of shows to our identity of what, what we were, what the kind of team that we were last year. I think one of the biggest lessons we learned last year as a program coming into this year is um, to not let anyone on the outside determine what we can do and what our identity is. And if you're not distracted, you can accomplish anything. And that's why we became really, a, I think, a very good road team, is that we really limited distractions. We have a phrase in our, perform in our program that says, performance equals potential minus interferences. And I think that really learning as a program how to minimize interferences, because when you go into Matthew Knight Arena, as Michaela referenced, uh, it is a great environment. How fun to compete in. And they have earned that support of that community. And what a challenge. But our job is to minimize those interferences. Our job is to look each other in the eye and to know what we need to do possession by possession. And that's easy to talk about, hard to build into your psyche and as well as into your habits. And I think um, they actually taught me about that, I think, last year. The power of that, they reminded my coaching heart about how powerful that can be. And that's something I want to continue to teach. And that's why that was a great win, but also a reference point um, going forward to what mentality can do. Hi again, Corey. Uh, for, for Cal and for the conference, um, Sharman Smith had, had left in the spring to, to join a WNBA team and come back. Um, for Lindsay to go to the NBA, wh what does it mean for Cal, but also for the Pac-12, that, that Sharman comes back here and uh, is one of the new, f new faces? Um, in the conference. Well, I think we get to be a part of two special things in that, right? That Lindsay is, you know, blazing a trail for women as the way she embarks into her NBA journey and fulfills a childlike dream and maybe blazes a trail that for other people to walk in in the future and more people to walk in. And then we get to keep one of our own at home, uh, somebody who has invested and sacrificed not only as a coach but also as a player in her time in the Pac-12. I have a lot of respect um, for Sharman, not only as um, a basketball coach but as a human being that wants to invest and use sport as an opportunity to invest and progress the lives of women. And I think she has a great passion. I had the opportunity to serve on the WBCA board with her and to see her wisdom, to see her vision. Um, even in our coaches meeting this morning, I just think it's a tremendous asset to keep her home in the Pac-12 footprint. And I think she's going to do a great job. And I'm really thankful uh, that she's involved. And I'm thankful for the trail that Lindsay's getting to blaze for the rest of us as well. Hi, Shereen Ryan in the front row. Um, Japrice and Michaela, you came from another state to play in Los Angeles. And I know Coach just talked about distractions, but I wanted to know what you've been enjoying about Los Angeles. Does your team have a, a restaurant they like to go to? Or is the beach a big deal? Like, I'm just really interested in that part. Well, for me, I think that hanging out with my teammates is probably the best part of being in L.A. I don't really have too many outside friends outside of my teammates. <laughs> but I would say our 
our go-to restaurant is the Boiling Crab. Um, we go there pretty often. They've kind of changed the menu, so <laughs> it's kind of messing up our pockets. But <laughs> we go there pretty often, and a lot of people love crab on our team. So, yeah. I would also have to agree with Japrice. I think coming from a different state, you don't really know, like, the city and it's new, all new people. But I think my teammates made it a really easy transition. And we, uh, we have some of the funniest people on my team. So I think it's always a great time. And the bo from the boiling crab trips to just being around each other, it's always such a great experience. And Aren't you a beach kind of gal? Sometimes, sometimes. Sand kind of gets me. But <laughs> I do like going to the beach if it's with my teammates. <laughs> but, yeah, I love, love hanging around my teammates. They're just great people to be around. Uh, Julie Jag from the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, Japrice actually wanted to ask you, you know, you got this extra season. What uh, benefit do you think you can bring um, with, with that extra year of, of knowledge and that extra year of experience and maturity? Um, I think, like you said, knowledge and experience is going to help me mentor and lead the younger um, class. I know we got two guards, two point guardish um, guards in, so I think that's going to help me, and it's it's going to keep me present and not think about the future. Um, so I think it's going to like help me lead them more um, instead of thinking about what I going what I'm going to do next. Corey, can I ask you a question while I got the mic? Of course. Is, is there a team that you think is particularly, you were talking about the depth of the Pac-12, mm -hmm. is there a team or a couple of teams that you think are particularly overlooked or um, underestimated? Well, I think Utah is one of those teams. I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I think Lynn Roberts does such a great job, and I think that the what they're building and, and their ability, and I love the way that Salt Lake is, is coming alongside of them as well as their attendance numbers have really grown. But um, they're a team that comes um, to mind right off the bat. But, uh, you know, I just, I, I mean, I'm looking around the room at our coaches meeting this morning. I'm thinking, man, I, I, I get to compete with all of these coaches. And I think that is something, you know, we always talk about as a coaching group that, you better adjust because the coaching group here is going to force you to be on your A game. And I think all of them have made me better. And so I think that's what is leading to that depth. But Utah is definitely one that comes, um, you know, off the top of my head in that group that could really make a surge. I think they proved that in, in how they played at spurts last year. Uh, you know, obviously Arizona's, uh, you know, really exciting to think about with their NIT championship. And we can really identify with the impact that has on a program. That was a huge turning point for us in 2000. 2014, or I guess the 2014-15 season where we won the NIT and how that spurred us on and really taught us how to win. And so, uh, you know, I think those are teams that come to mind right away, but I think there's many teams that could make that kind of run. I mean, you look at what Washington did in the tournament, and, you know, there's just a lot of really well-coached teams with really excellent players that know how to make plays, and so that's what brings the excitement of this incredible conference. We have time for one more question. How is that going to help you at UCLA? Oh, I had the opportunity to participate in the USA 3-on-3 three three, um, basketball realm, and then I also was on the Pan-American team, which went to Peru, and I think they were both really great experiences. It took me to Russia, to Canada, obviously to Peru, Brooklyn, like all over, so I was, it was a really great experience. As far as what it's going to teach me, um, I think it's a little bit different as far as like bringing back what I learned because it is just so physical in the international realm. It is so aggressive, and that's something that's it was definitely an adjustment period of coming from college. And so, um, for the Pan American team, I would say um, just working hard. I think that's kind of what got me to being able to be on the Pan American team, and I think that's something that we talk about too in our in our program. So just working hard, having fun while doing it, doing the right things, and then, yeah. So I think that's probably what I've learned. And she won't say this, but her I think her IQ has just skyrocketed because she already studies the game all the time. When she watched film with Coach Tony every week, last, and she'd already watched it twice by the time she got to her film session with Coach Tony, um, but then having to learn not only different systems in terms of the Pan American game, but then an entirely different game in three on three. I just see the way that she's talking about the game. I don't even think she realizes how much her basketball IQ has increased by those experiences, but I think that will pay dividends in our preparation over time. All right, that's all the time we have. Thanks so much.